Today, we're gonna teach you how to make your own stencil. Hey guys, if you like what we do, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you get notified when we put out a new video. We got some really cool stuff coming up you guys don't want to miss, so hit that button. Also, don't forget guys, we got our Black Friday sale coming up, 50% off, a whole bunch of stuff. It's our biggest sale of the year, you guys don't want to miss it. Check the website, makeawoodsign.com, we got lots of cool stuff on there. Every once in a while, I get questions on, what if I get an order for a bunch of signs? Signs that are almost all identical, or maybe they are all identical. How do I speed up my process and make a big batch of signs, maybe 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 signs? Here's a way you can really streamline your layout process, which will save you a ton of time when you're making a big batch of signs. So for this stencil, we're using our inch and a half Bookman font and just a piece of eighth inch hard Board. Let's get started. Okay, so for this example, my board is basically 5 by 16. So I'm going to make my layout template stencil just a little bit smaller than that so that it's easy to eyeball and center on my board. From this point, it's pretty much layout just like I would a regular sign. I'm just drawing my lines top and bottom because they're all going to be inch and a half bookman. I'm going to lay my letters out left to right centering on my actual stencil. I'm going to straighten all the letters just to make sure everything looks right. Now for the bottom, I'm putting the 37 on here because I just want to have my spacing right for two numbers. And again, guys, depending on what you're making, what you're making stencils for, if they are going to be customized like this one is, customizable, then you just want to put spacing correctly. So if I didn't have that 37 on there, I wouldn't know where to put the lot. Now that I've got the layout done, this is super critical that you draw lines top and bottom. That's really going to help out when you get to carving. Now we're going to be cutting all the way through, completely through this piece of hardboard. So I decided to go ahead and use the blue tape and the star bond trick just to hold it down. This is just a little sacrifice piece of pine that I'm going to be cutting clear through the hardboard into the pine. What I'm doing here is I'm making lines for all of the letters that have what I call dropouts. That's the middle pieces that I don't want to be completely cut out. So these black lines are going to be my division of where I don't want to cut. And you'll see that once we get into carving. So I'm setting my depth just slightly beyond the surface, the bottom surface of the hardboard. Now this hardboard is pretty tough on bits but I decided to use the carving liner because I wanted to have really tight lines to the edges of these inside lines. So the hardboard is really tough, but these solid carbide cutters should have no problem getting through them. But my bit is fairly sharp. Now when you're cutting these out, remember you're cutting all the way through and you're going to have pieces that want to chip out on you because literally you're cutting them all the way out. So you want to be aware of that, that they don't get caught on your base and cause you to miss the line that you want. If you kind of lose track of what's going to pop out of there, then it could catch on the underside of the base and really mess you up. So once I get a piece popped out, then I go back and I, like I did on that M, and just kind of clean it up if there's something I missed. Because the thing about this hardboard is it does kind of burr up a little bit. So you can see after I cut each one, I go back in and I just clean it up a little bit just to make sure it's the way I want it.
even though this hardboard is again super hard it's very consistent so it's not like you have to worry about a grain catching the bit it's really consistent now we just have to pull it off get the tape off the back and all the glue residue and now we're ready to do a layout but before we do a layout I want to cut a piece of cardboard and the reason I'm doing this is I want to have a block for the difference between the regular stencil and the place where I want to put my custom numbers for instance that 37 that I used before when I was spacing out the bottom line you'll see what I mean here in a minute all I'm doing is I'm just gonna cut out this block here and that way it will leave me a perfect piece that I can cover the stencil layout while I'm doing my customized part of my layout so now I just take my stencil I eyeball it top to bottom and left to right and I'll do my layout on my stencil part now I'll draw a line where I want my custom number to go get my regular numbers on there make sure the spacing is right now I've got my block that will cover my other layout for my stencil so that I can do the layout on my customized part and there you go now I'm going to use my 60 degree bit which is my normal inset bit I've set it at about 3 16 and now I'm just cutting my inset letters now one thing to keep in mind you've got a couple choices here because the layout is a little skinnier than the full size inch and a half bookman letters what I've decided to do on here is I am cutting just a little bit wider than the skinny layout that I had that way it will match perfectly with the numbers that aren't part of the stencil the other option you have is to take your stencil and open up the lines a little bit better to make them a little bit fatter so that they match your regular layout numbers so now that all of our inset letters are done now we're going to put a deep chamfer on this just the way I normally would any other sign or most of the other signs I happen to like rounded corners and a deep chamfer and now we're just going to spray it with a black primer like normal just making sure I don't over spray now we're sanding it off using a 60 grit with the disc sander and a quick 120 with the random orbital we'll put a quick clear coat on it and we're good to go so here's a perfect example guys of the way you can make your own stencil whether they're going to be customized or they're going to all be the same it's been a while guys since I did something like this but I'm really happy with the way it came out and this is again just an example you may have a completely different set of batched signs that you need to do maybe they're not all customized with different numbers maybe it's a Merry Christmas or maybe it's a Happy Holidays or maybe it's a bunch of signs that are identical that you wouldn't have to customize each one the way I did on here but this I thought would be a good example for you how you could use a stencil in conjunction with actually customizing it as well so anyway guys I hope this helps I hope that you learn something from this so remember guys we'll have links in the description below you can go and check out everything that we've got on the website and anything that might help you with this process we appreciate you guys watching Thanks again. We love you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.